Have you ever thought about how your brain um, interprets whether we're full or not? So a term for fullness is satiety, and a lot of this happens within the hypothalamus and the medulla of our brain stem. So we're gonna talk about different hormones that play a role in our satiety. Uh, there's two groups of nuclei in the, in the hypothalamus. One is called the arcuate nucleus, and one is called the paraventricular nucleus. And these are key nuclei that play a role in our satiety. Then we also have a, a, a group of neuronal cell bodies within the medulla, the bottom part of the brainstem, called the nucleus of tractus solitarius. A good Latin word for you there. And it gets information from the vagus nerve. Remember, the vagus nerve is our key parasympathetic nerve innervation. And it plays a big role in our gastrointestinal motility and satiety and, and different secretions within the GI tract. So it's also getting information, you know, whether it's mechanical information, you know, if your stomach is starting to stretch because there's a lot of food in there, then it'll send um, action potentials up to the nucleus attractus solitarius, and that'll tell it that we're full. It'll go ahead and project to the cortex of the brain and, and give us that perception. So uh, the vagus nerve also has chemoreceptors on it, and different hormones that are produced peripherally outside our central nervous system can bind to those, and then they can also go up and bind to the neurons. There's receptors for them in the arcuate nucleus. They'll bind to those. So we have two little subgroups within the arcuate nucleus. One is called POMC neurons, and that stands for, you ready for it? Pro-opiomelanocortin um, neurons. So uh, they're gonna produce melanocyte stimulating hormone, and that's where that word comes from. So whenever these neurons are stimulated, they'll project to the paraventricular nucleus, which is close by within the hypothalamus, and they release melanocyte-stimulating hormones, so alpha MSH onto receptors there, melanocortin receptors at the paraventricular nucleus, and then that will be able to give us that feeling of fullness or satiety. Uh, the, on the opposite side, this other subtop within the arcuate nucleus is called AGRP neurons, and that stands for agouti-related peptide, and these are orexigenic. That means they make us hungry. So whenever they get stimulated, they release a, a neurotransmitter called neuropeptide Y that will release that neurotransmitter onto receptors on the paraventricular nucleus and give us uh, the feeling of hunger. Whereas MSH is anorexigenic, so it gives us a feeling of fullness. Uh, agouti comes from the top of mice they did research on and found a lot of this information out with, with hunger. Uh, they would get really large when they would do different knockout genes and stuff like that. So um, ghrelin is a hormone. It's the only one, our primary one, that, that tells us we're hungry. So ghrelin is released by cells in the stomach whenever we're in a fasted state in between meals. And that ghrelin will be released, go up to the... AGRP neurons, stimulate them, this needs an R, to release MPY, neuropeptide Y, onto the paraventricular nucleus, tell us we're hungry. It can also go to chemoreceptors on the vagus nerve, and those, when it binds to those receptors, that'll tell the NTS, nucleus of tractus solitarius, that we are hungry. We have a whole suite of hormones that tell us we're full. Uh, three of these, or four of these that I have up here come from the actual small intestine. So we have cells that line our small intestine called enterocytes. And when food stuff, it's called calm at that point, gets into the small intestine, it will stimulate the release of these hormones, which include peptide YY, cholecystokinin. That one, uh, cholecyst is another name for your gallbladder. It'll go to the gallbladder and cause gallbladder release of bile, but it also goes to the uh, arcuate nucleus and vagus nerve and, and tells us we're satiated. And then GLP-1 and GIP, I made another video on these because there's a really popular drug out, uh, you know, semi-glutide and then uh, Mongero. They're used for weight loss and diabetes. These will tell us we're satiated. Uh, they are also in cretins, so they'll stimulate the release of uh, insulin, which also tells us we're full. So. Um, all three of these, PYY, CCK, GLP-1, and GIP, these stand for glucagon-like peptide 1, and uh, this one is gastric inhibitory peptide or 
glucose-dependent insulotropic peptide, polypeptide. So uh, these hormones are released. They go stimulate chemoreceptors to tell the NTS that we're full. full. They'll go stimulate POMC neurons that will project MSH onto the paraventricular nucleus and tell us we're full from another route. Also, insulin and leptin, I kind of like to talk about these together because they're similar. You can get insulin resistance and ghrelin resistance just by um, overproducing them. So leptin's produced for our adipocytes. If you have a lot of visceral fat and you're just cranking out leptin all the time, just like if you're cranking out insulin all the time, cells stop responding. So cells in the hypothalamus stop responding to leptin. Cells all throughout the body stop responding to insulin and allowing glucose in. So uh, it's important to have healthy levels of insulin and leptin. When, you're, when, you're at a, when you have a lot of lean body mass and you're lean, your body has a, a lot stronger leptin sensitivity uh, because leptin also increases your meta metabolism. But insulin and leptin, they'll, they'll go and uh, act on the vagus nerve with chemoreceptors, go to the nucleus tractus solitarius and tell us we're full through projecting to the cortex. They'll also go up to the uh, palm C neurons and stimulate MSH to tell the periventricular nucleus we're uh, satiated. A lot of these neurons will also cross over. So you can have some of these hormones cross over and not only stimulate the palm C neurons, but they'll inhibit the agouti related peptide hormones or neurons. So uh, they'll, they'll inhibit these. So you kind of get both sides going. Same thing, ghrelin can come over here and inhibit the palm C neurons so you get a stronger effect. So collectively, there's a lot going on with where we're hungry or full, but uh, hopefully this kind of gives you a little bit of understanding how the brain works.